Are you about to undergo some kind of lumbar spinal fusion surgery? Perhaps you've been reading up on it and heard different terms used, different approaches or different types of lumbar fusion such as A-lift, D-lift, T-lift, X-lift, and you're wondering what all these terms mean, what's the difference between them, and which one may be more suitable for you. My name's Anthony Gosh, I'm a consultant spinal neurosurgeon and founder of the Spine MDT. In this video, I'm briefly going to go through all these procedures, and at the end of the video, I'm going to explain which one I choose to use and why. Have a look at the links below where I've described the indications for lumbar fusion and other aspects of the surgery. This video is purely going to focus on the different approaches. Fusion simply means the joining together of two or more bones. Now in these abbreviations that we use, A-lif, T-lif, D-lif and so forth, the common three letters are L-I-F, which stands for Lumbar Interbody Fusion. And essentially what that means is, here is the spine, so that's the front of the spine and that's the back, these are just three bones. And here we have fused together, joined together, these two bones. So lumbar interbody fusion simply means the placement of a cage, a type of graft or breeze block between the two bones after you've removed the disc and then holding the two bones together with a construct of screws and rods and that is the modern lumbar interbody fusion and that's the commonality of these different procedures but there are different approaches to putting in this instrumentation and that's what we'll go into. Let's start with PLIF or PLIF, posterior lumbar interbody fusion. This isn't really carried out that often today because we've evolved to other techniques, but this simply means coming into the spine from the back. So we're looking at the spine head on now from, from, from the back of the spine. There's a midline incision. The muscle is all stripped out of the way. The arches here that we see here are removed at the segment where we're going to carry out the surgery. The screws are placed at the back in the pedicles, the same as before. The nerves and everything are moved out of the way. The disc is removed from the back and that cage, that breeze block, that graft is put in from the back. This procedure does involve a larger incision than the other procedures and a fair bit of soft tissue dissection to carry out and therefore can take longer to recover from. And therefore nowadays, not many surgeons still use this procedure. Another common procedure is the T-lift, transforaminal lumbar interbody fusion. This has evolved into a minimally invasive technique through two very small incisions either side of the midline. But this time we're just removing the joint either side or usually just one side of the spine and accessing the disc space through one side through which we put in the cage, the breeze block here. And again, we have the same construct of four screws coming out through the skin that are then um, connected with rods and everything is then buried afterwards. All this stuff is removed and it's all buried under the skin. It's a minimally invasive technique. One of the disadvantages is that the cage itself um, is a bit smaller, but nonetheless, a good fusion can still be achieved with good results and it's minimally invasive. Another technique developed in more recent years is the X-lift, extreme lateral uh, interbody fusion. Some people abbreviate it as D-lift or direct, direct lateral interbody fusion. And this is where you come in through as an incision on the side of your waist. And this way you come through the muscle here, but you can get a much bigger cage and therefore more surface area, supposedly leading to better fusion between the two bones. Um, it also allows you to get a slightly better correction because of the size of the cage of the alignment um, of the spine. But one of the disadvantages is you are coming through this muscle here, which can cause pain along the muscle and some weakness of this muscle. So particularly when flexing your hip, you also have the lumbar plexus that travels along here. And therefore that can be disrupted sometimes causing weakness of the leg. Um, one of the advantages, depending on the scenario, you can just insert the cage with, with a plate and screws from the side, avoiding having to make incisions at the back of the spine or at the back to put further screws in up and down. The other disadvantage is that because you're coming in from the side, these pelvic blades here, the pelvic bones, can limit your access to some of the lower discs if they need, if that segment needs to be fused. Another approach is the OLIF or oblique lateral interbody fusion, 
Some people call it anterior to psoas lateral interbody fusion. Um, this is similar to the previous technique, except we're slightly in front of the psoas muscle. So we're coming in obliquely, hence OLIF. This means an incision sort of to the side and front of the abdomen, um, moving bowel contents and vessels out of the way and retracting a little bit on this muscle, we access the disc, remove it and place the cage in this way. However, if we do this operation, we still need to put screws in at the back of the spine through uh, small incisions. And this does pose a still a little bit of risk to some of the nerves whilst we are retracting but a little less so than doing the lateral lumbar interbody fusion. And this can be a little bit restrictive again with some of the lowest disc uh, segments. Then finally, we have the ALIF, A-L-I-F or anterior lumbar interbody fusion. This simply means coming into the spine from the front. And this is usually saved for the lower segments of the spine. So it's a small incision at the very bottom of the abdomen. Um, these blood vessels are moved out of the way to give access to the disc, which is removed. And here we have a side view x-ray where a larger cage can be placed and secured with two screws. And again, one of the advantages of this is particularly at this lower segment of the spine here, the L5S1 segment, it's easier to get a larger size cage in place and achieve a good correction if there's a misalignment, for example, a spondylolisthesis where one bone slips forward over the other and get a much better correction of height where the disc is lost, where the disc height is lost. One of the disadvantages is because you have the blood vessels here, you are limited to the lower segments of the spine because these two main blood vessels here are obscuring your view to the higher up segments. Another advantage, however, is that we don't always have to put screws in through the back of the spine. Um, some of these cages come with a design allowing us to put four screws in at the front, um, eliminating the need to put in extra screws at the back of the spine. So in most cases, it's just one approach. This review article here compares the different approaches for different segments in the spine. The study recommended that at the L5S1 level, the lowest level in the spine, the ALIF is probably the better procedure achieving the best outcomes. And that's because you can simply get a much bigger cage here at the bottom. It's important at the bottom of the spine is that's where you get this sort of acute curvature and you naturally have generally more height in this disc here and you can restore that better with a larger cage. At the level above L45, the recommendation is a T-lift transforaminal lumbar interbody fusion, and that can all be done from the back of the spine through this uh, minimally invasive technique. And then at the levels above that, L34 and upwards, all other techniques are reasonable. And that's why in my personal practice, I do the T-lift at all levels, except for L5S1 where I do an ALIF. And the reason I do that at all levels rather than incorporate other techniques is because it's my workhorse procedure. That way you maintain the skills, you do the operation more often, you maintain the skills and get better outcomes overall. There are some um, exceptions to that rule, which your surgeon I'm sure will discuss with you, but that's the general rule I follow for the best outcomes. I really hope you found this video helpful and as always if you did please click that like button and subscribe to the channel and please visit us at spinemdt.com to see how we can help you. Thank you for watching.